Some more custom effects include overlays. There are three main types of overlays available in the layer effects dot, uh, options within Photoshop. They include color, gradient, and pattern, or texture, but I guess technically they are called a pattern. If you take a look at this first example, I was able to change the original blue color of the snowflake to be green, and I could do it in a non-destructive uh, way by simply adding a color overlay layer effect within the layer styles dialog box. And more options. If a gradient overlay is applied to a layer, the color change will reflect a gradient instead of a solid color. Use the blend mode options to allow the gradient to blend with the original artwork color. These examples on this slide are all of the same original blue snowflake with the same white to blue gradient. The only difference is in the blend mode. So here uh, we used normal, multiply, and overlay. And it's crazy how different the examples come out by simply changing the blend mode. Nothing else is different on those four examples um, except for that blend mode. All right, pattern overlays are fun because they add texture in a non-destructive way. As an added bonus, Photoshop users can easily create their own textures to use if you can't find one that fits your needs. For example, here on this slide, <clears throat> we wanted to make the snowflake look like it had actual snow inside, so we made a texture to use. I can walk you through the steps to do this custom pattern. So before we apply a pattern overlay, let's first create our own pattern texture to use. It's actually a really easy process. First, open the image you wish to make into the texture. And so in this example, I opened an image that had kind of a snow texture to it. Then choose the Edit menu and Define Pattern. A dialog box will appear. And then you can give the pattern a name and select OK. I feel like nothing ha it may feel like nothing happened. But when we follow the steps to apply a pattern overlay, you'll now see your image available as a texture from that dropdown. And you can see on this slide here that the pattern that I was able to select when applying a texture or a pattern to the snowflake was a picture or a snapshot of the snow that I just saved as a pattern. When applying a pattern overlay, you need to select a pattern from the dropdown menu. If you've defined your own pattern, it will be available. In this particular example on the slide, we used um, Jessica's pattern at a scale of 43%, 100% opacity, and used the multiply blend mode. So why don't we jump over to Photoshop and demo the, that. And so I've got my snowflake open, if we go over here, and I made the snowflake. I used the custom shape tool again, and I used the, the shape drop-down menu to create a snowflake, and it's blue. And I can use any of the three overlays to modify it. And so the first thing that I can do is if I select that shape layer and select the uh, layer effects option at the bottom of your layers panel, is we can apply a color overlay. And so we could easily experiment and change the color of the snowflake until you find something that works for your liking. And so just like in the example, I could make the blue snowflake turn green if I wanted to. I don't want to do that though because I want to eventually apply a pattern. So I'll hit undo or I will cancel out of that dialog box. The second thing you could do is you could apply, if we come back to that FX drop down menu, you can apply a gradient overlay. And um, with the default blending mode of normal turned on, no matter what gradient you apply, you will see the exact effects that it would create on your snowflake. And so maybe you can find one that you like, or you could append, like we've been learning for the other libraries. And so maybe we do special effects and append those and see if there's something in there that might work for us. Maybe, no, I don't like that one. Um, or let's let's append one more and see if we can find. Let's do simple. And so you may find something in here that works for you or not. Um, don't forget that when you're modifying a gradient, you can always modify the settings of the gradient. And so if we zoom in and look at the choices we have available, um, you could make the gradient radial, which means it will be in a circle. So if we zoom out here, you'll see it's a white circle that fades to blue. If you reverse your gradient, it'll be a blue circle that fades to white. And you can find something maybe that works for you, and you can, you can experiment and try different gradients and different things. But again, I'm not trying to apply a gradient. I want to apply a pattern. And so I'm going to hit Cancel, and we'll go back in there one more time. And so we'll select the shape layer, select the effects drop down, and this time I'm going to choose Pattern Overlay. The Pattern Overlay, if you choose it by default, um, it's coming up as screen and the rain texture because that's the last texture that I used. I like to change the blending mode to normal and then start applying the textures 
And then from there, you can see if you need to make adjustments to the blending mode. And so there's a lot of preset textures that you can apply. And so some of them will look good, some of them won't. You can always adjust the opacity. How much are you going to see of that pattern or how much is it going to blend with the original blue color in our case of that snowflake. And you can also increase or decrease the scale. And so if you decrease the scale, you'll start to see a pattern form. And you can see like a grid of a little image that's repeating over and over again. And so you might want to bring it or zoom it in enough that you don't see that. Now because I have saved my snow as a texture, oops, actually I haven't, I got ahead of myself. Um, I want to apply snow as my texture. And so before I can do anything, I need to find an image that has a texture that I want. And I found this image here. And if you open it in Photoshop and choose the edit menu and then go down to define pattern, you can save this pattern so it's available to you in Photoshop. And so I'll call this snow texture and select OK. And as I said in the slideshow, it almost looks like nothing happened, but something did happen. If I close out of this document and I go back to the snowflake and now I try to apply a pattern overlay, my snow is now a choice, zoom in here, it's now a choice on my pattern options. And so I'm going to select the pattern, I'm going to change the blending mode to normal so I can see the picture, and then I'm going to zoom out of the picture so I can see it. And you can see that if you zoom out too much, you start to have tiling. And so the first thing that I would do is I would adjust the scale until you get what you're looking for in the design. And what I want is not to see any of the lines where the picture would be repeating. And so I have to go a little bit bigger than this. And I kind of like that. I like that the texture is really nice and in focus right down the middle. The next thing we can do is we can adjust the opacity. If the opacity is at 100%, I'm basically just going to see a clipping mask of the picture. But as you lower it, you'll start to see that your artwork will blend into the original color of the blue background. And maybe you can find a nice harmony there. And the last thing that I would do is I would adjust the blending mode. And so I might choose overlay or multiply, etc. And so Whitney, do you have those settings handy that we used? Okay, so there was um, the, well, the pattern was scaled, scaled to 43%. Oh, I was so close. I was at 47%. 100% uh, opacity and multiply blend mode. Okay, and so in this example, it's much darker than the previous example because of the color blue that I had used. And so if you wanted to, you could also apply a color overlay, or you can go back and you could change the color of the shape. And so we could change the color of the shape up here on our application bar or options bar. And you could choose a different blue color. I think that one looks better for our snowflake. And then I'm not, I'm not limited to this. You can still go back and you can apply additional effects. And so if you wanted to apply a bevel and emboss, if you wanted to, to do another blending mode, different things like that, you could always go back and apply additional um, layer effects to your object. And then one last thing that we want to mention before we wrap up this video is that you should always be considering, should I be saving that as a style? Am I going to use that in the future? And so if I felt like I was going to use this style over and over again in my design, I would want to launch that styles panel, hit the option flyout menu, and choose new style.